Okay, hi everybody. So in this video, I'm going to go over another parallel task graph uh, extraction problem. We want to see uh, for our bubble sort algorithm, in this case here on the left, uh, what our parallel task graph will be and answer a few questions such as what are our dependencies, what is the width, work, critical path, and the length of the critical path. Very common metrics of interest from a parallel task graph. Uh, bubble sort here is in line with the problems that we've seen so far. Uh, it's a two-dimensional problem. What do I mean by that? Well, we have two for loops uh, that each need to be taken care of. Uh, and so we end up with i being the first dimension and j being the second dimension. Uh, for this problem, we can go ahead and decide on our task granularity. Uh, if you're familiar with bubble sort, you know that here in the body, we're determining if we need to swap two elements. A swap is the finest grain operation inside of a sort, and so that's also the finest grain task that we're going to use. It, we don't really get anything from splitting this if statement up any further, and it really isn't even possible to split it up any further. So we will use this entire body as our task granularity. Uh, so to get started, let's just go ahead and start with the first task that we definitely know about, which is i equals zero, j equals one. And so we'll draw a task that looks like this. So that's our task. Uh, and now we want to bring out our dependencies. We're going to look at ij or aj, a at j and a at j minus 1. j is 1, so j minus 1 is 0. And j is one, so j is one. So we look at a at j minus one, a at j. First we read. Then if our if statement is true, uh, we will write these values. Now we need to assume that it's always true in this case because that's going to give us the most detailed dependencies. We can't guarantee that it will or won't be true, and if we guess wrong, then our algorithm, our, our parallel task graph will be incorrect. Uh, and so any parallelism you try to introduce will also be wrong. So we need to assume the worst case. We need to assume it hits all of the dependencies. So this will turn into a right. This will turn into a right. Uh, and then that's really it. That's the end of our task. In the next iteration, we'll do j equals 2. And we've got the same idea. We do j minus 1. We do j proper. So a1, a2. Uh, read and then write. Read and then write. And what we notice here is we share a1. So we have a dependency here, and this dependency is going to be um, read after write on a1. Uh, so these are our first tasks uh, that we're interested in looking at. Of course, you could continue this, but you'll notice the algorithm doesn't change. And so the trend here is about the same. Uh, you're going to access A2, A3, read and then write, which is going to give us the worst K or the, um, the dependency that we're interested in being A2, because again, they match across. And it's the same kind of dependency. Uh, so you can imagine you can take this all the way to the end for i equals 0, j equals n minus 1. You will have the same behavior. You will be dependent on the previous value. Uh, and so that's the, this is the beginning of our task graph. This is our first dimension. And we see we've got pretty predictable dependencies. Let's include the second dimension. 
So now we want to iterate i. i equals 1, j equals 1. a values are going to be the same because we're entirely dependent on j for which memory accesses we look at. So for example, if you look at this PDF, it's just j, 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 j. i is never mentioned. i is just how many times we need to do this for bubble sort to be correct. So our dependencies are going to be the same here. Um, this is interesting. You'll notice then that we should have a dependency here which I'll draw with dots. Also, we have a dependency here, one, one. Now, the important thing to notice is that we must compute i0, j2 before we compute i1, j1. That's true for i0, j1, too. But i0, j2 depends on i0, j1 which means that no matter what, this will be computed and then this will be computed. That means that while these are both dependencies, this one, i0, j2, is our direct dependency. Uh, the values from here have are, will have already been decided. This is a transitive dependency. So I'll go ahead and erase it. Uh, for clarity, to keep the picture clean, you may find you want to include all transitive dependencies. You may not know which ones are direct and which ones are transitive when you're first doing this. It makes sense to draw them all and then go back and remove the transitive ones. Anyway, moving on, what we find is then i equals 1, j equals 2, and we already know how this picture plays out because it plays out exactly like it does above us. Uh, and so we'll have a dependency here. Let me go ahead and label this. So this is A1. And it's a write and then read. Uh, and I'll stop labeling these. Um, for now, you may you should probably continue, especially if I ask you to do exam questions or homework, you should continue to label these. But for the sake of time, we won't do that here. We end up with i, j, I and j, i equals 1, j equals 2, uh, a1, a2, and of course you end up with this same cross dependency that you had before. Also, you have a dependency here. The same way you had this dependency, we're dependent on A2 and A2. So we have this cross dependency. And once again, this will take place forever. You can take this to its logical conclusion. You can do I equals zero, J equals M I, or sorry, I equals one, J equals N minus one. Uh, and the relationship will be the same. Uh, and so what that means then is that we can take all of this to our sort of logical conclusion. At the bottom here, you'll have i equals n minus 1, j equals 1. And then you take this to the end and you end up with i equals n minus 1, j equals n minus 1. Things don't really change. These are our key relationships. And so uh, this really highlights the structure of this graph. Uh, how many specific nodes do you need to draw? Well, you just need to draw enough to find the patterns. Some algorithms are more complex. You may need to draw more nodes to see the patterns. But this is the full picture, at least the full picture that we're interested in for now. Um, and so, um, we can start to answer questions about our dependencies and our graph metrics. Uh, so let's first start, first let's consider work. I know we're skipping a question, but let's consider work. Uh, well, if we consider each task has a weight of one or a cost of one, uh, you know, it could be the case that if the if statement is false, the cost is zero, but we're going to work in big O notation. So cost is one, 
uh, period. We don't know if it's going to pass the if statement or not. So the worst case is everything has a weight of one. Well, that means we're going to do n times n minus one tasks. You've got an n dimension this way. You've got n minus one, or sorry, n minus one this way, n this way. That's n squared. And so our work is going to be on the order of n squared, big O of n squared. We do that first because this is actually an upper bound of our width. Uh, in the optimal case, you know, maybe our width could also be n squared. Of course, it, it can't be. You can't parallelize more than you have work to do. So uh, this is going to give us sort of a bounding block for our width. The width, where is this the widest? So the widest part of this graph uh, might be a little tricky to figure out. Uh, so we can consider at the beginning of time, this has, this is the only independent node. This is the only node that we have. We compute this node. We compute I0, J1. We compute I0, J2. Once we've computed I0, J2, then we have independent nodes I0, J3, and I1, J1. Okay, uh, these two will be independent. You can calculate both. Then if you can move forward, you finish this and this, then you can compute I1, J2. And so we keep our two independent tasks. If you keep moving in this direction, then it will free up the third task here to be independent. So you'll have one, two, three. And if you take this to its logical conclusion, by the end, you will have the full diameter of this square, almost square graph uh, to work in. So you'll notice this goes, this is length n minus one, like we discussed for work, this is length n. Uh, we have almost the full diameter to work with. That's gonna put our width at n. In the widest case, we're going to have n independent nodes. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, our critical path. So first, what is the critical path? Uh, well, you start here. You usually start at the first node, especially if there's one independent node. That's usually where to start. Uh, not always, but that's a good, it's a good place to start and to start your, your exploration, your analysis. Uh, now, this task is going to take us this direction and back here. And what you'll find is that we continue to have these tasks kind of zigzag as you go down until you reach here. That's going to give us two end tasks. And then we walk this way to the end, and it gives us another end. That would be a path of 3n, which is on the order of O of n. Uh, and in practice, that is the longest, ta the, the critical path. Um, you could actually follow this out this direction too. Uh, I believe you'll get the same zigzagging behavior that you could use to follow through. I don't think that one's actually longer. This is the interesting critical path. Um, and again, it's just an order. You're just walking the perimeter of this um, of this task graph, which is what you see in many of the examples we've already covered. So anyway, uh, in summary, that's how we would extract a parallel task graph from this uh, and how we would compute metrics from it. Sometimes you do have to do a little bit of critical thinking to figure out what the width will be. You have to figure out what this resolved uh, path will be. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I think this is a good example of kind of what you want to, what your thought process should be, what you want to be doing to figure out what these tasks are. Anyway, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching.